Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, The Best Features in Vectorworks 2018. Each year, Vectorworks releases its new version. It usually has a huge number of new or improved features, and this year is no different. In this webinar, we will be looking at the most important features of Vectorworks 2018, and now, and also how you can benefit from them right away. Today's webinar presenter, Jonathan Pickup, is an architect trained in New Zealand and in the UK with more than 30 years of experience. He has been writing and producing Vectorwork, Vectorworks manuals and providing customer support for more than 15 years. His company, Archon CAD, is the premier provider of third-party manuals and training resources for Vectorworks. He also runs the Vectorworks online user group and provides its main direction. And let me tell you a little bit about what we do. Novedge is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions um, that cater to virtually every designer's needs. So um, don't be shy and visit us at novedge.com. And for more daily software news and promotions, um, also visit the Novedge blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. We're everywhere. Coming up next week, introducing Twinmotion 2018, the newest 3D immersion software. Last but not least, today's webinar is free and is being recorded live. If you want to rewatch this or any webinar episodes in our collection, just head on over to Novedge's YouTube or Vimeo channels. And now it's time for me um, to give up my screen and share Jonathan's so um, he can walk you over the new uh, Vectorworks 2018. Take it away, Jonathan. Cool. Thank you very much, Barbara. I, um, so some of you I notice are already subscribers to my website, so you should have um, been able to see this new manual that I've written. I run this website, every month we get a new manual, and this month it was all about what's new in Vectorworks 2018. Now there were lots of features that are new in Vectorworks 2018, but I don't want to go through everything. What I'd like to do is focus on those things that I think are most important, things like uh, multiple drawing views, the direct section editing, the dis drawing distribution and so on. So we're going to just go through some of those things, not going to go through everything. And I'm going to start with multiple drawing views. This is a change, and I think that, that there's a challenge here that if you're, you've nearly always got a workflow which doesn't include the idea of multiple drawing views. So when we show you multiple drawing views, quite often people look at them and say, well, I'm not sure how I'm going to use that. So what I'd like to do is try and explain some of that so that you can start to use them. But first of all, multiple drawing panes or multiple view panes, there's an option here when you click on it, we can now see we've got four views. And if I create an object, it will appear in all four of my views. There it is. So it just automatically comes up. You can see the different views. One of the interesting things is that you can set, if I set my uh, automatic working plane, I can start on one particular view and I can draw to a different view. So you can actually draw between different views provided they're on the same layer and they've got the same sort of view. So you can't draw from a 3D view to a plan view, for example. So you might sort of, why is this important? Well, it could be quite useful if it was a large object or a large project where you need to have one view zoomed in, in one area, and a different view zoomed into another area, and then we could draw between different panes. So I could start drawing here, and I could finish drawing there, which is really handy. Another thing might be that you might want to have, for example, a drawing area with your design layers on it, and then have an eye on your um, sheet layers. So let's go back to this project here. I want to look at something like my lower ground floor framing plan. There it is, let's activate my multiple view panes. And you can see I've got a site plan here. I have my drawing there and I also have, I have to wait for it to come up, my site model layer there. You can move these panes around. You can activate the pane by clicking on it. There's a little lozenge shape here. If you right click on it, 
you can use the same visibilities in all panes, which means that everything was everything is the same everywhere. Uh, but I don't want that because I'd like to set this particular one. I'd like to set this one here to be uh, my demolition plan. I can zoom in and zoom out. There's my demolition plan there. I'd like this to be an upper floor plan. So my proposed upper floor plan. So I'm going to zoom in there as well. And I'd like this side over here to actually be a design layer. So we want that to be my upper floor design layer. So let's say, for example, we have to make a change to a drawing. And this came up with me the other day where I had an entire um, project. It was all finished. And then the architect decided that the upper floor would be better if we extended it out a metre. Now, I don't want to show you that particular project because it's a commercial project. We're still in, uh, we still need to keep a little bit private. And the, um, the architect wanted me to extend the building, which meant turning the joists and running them 90 degrees. And I had a floor above and I had a floor below. And what I did was I turned my design layer here to, so that I could see all my design layers. And I had um, show, snap, modify others turned on. And then on this side here, I had my two viewports or my two sheet layers. And as I made changes to my drawing, I could see those changes updating on my viewports or on my sheet layers. So this wall here, I'm going to split that. I'm just going to show you an example. So I'm going to grab my split tool. I'm going to split that wall. I want this part of the wall to go on the demolition class. So wall, demolished. So it disappears from this design layer. But just have a look here how that's updated my demolition drawing and it's also vanished from my proposed drawing. So let's go back here. I'll turn that class back on because I want to make a change to it. So that's my demolition wall. That's my existing wall. I'll get my reshape tool. I'll drag a marquee around that end and I'll move that along to that end there because maybe I want to change those two walls. And that wall should have gone too. I'll just move it. I should have selected both. But you can see how making that change to those two walls, it's actually changed both my drawings as well. And I think that's going to be a really important improvement in, in the way you use Vectorworks. Now, you might notice that it's actually a little bit tricky to see because my screen is so small. I've got a small screen at the moment so that everyone can see everything easily and quickly because I've got to share it with you. Um, but my real screen, I just bought a new one. It's a bigger screen. And I was talking to someone the other day, it's got a 4K screen, a, a UHD screen, which he said in America cost him about $400. That gives you so much extra room to put these drawings in. It is really super cool. So let's go back. I'm going to turn these, I'm going to close all of those. So how do we set up our multiple view panes? Well, first of all, you do have to click on this button here, which will create some view panes for you. But then you can right click and you can split vertically. So I tend to split them vertically because I've used a program before where we had multiple view panes and I tended to have a, a two thirds, one third split. So right click, let's split horizontally and then I'd split those two in half. And then this one can become, as I showed you earlier, this one can become my, maybe my site plan, and this one becomes my demolition plan. And if you do fit to window, you can see the entire sheet. Fit to window, you can see the entire sheet. And so now I can work on my drawing, I can work on my design, and I'll be able to see the, the design update in these areas. So if I close that one. So right click, I'm going to close that one, right click, close that one. So what's another example for this? What about if I'm working in plan view here and I would very much like to see the 3D model of the house? Now right click. Now I've already done this. I think I've already mentioned this before, the same views or the same invisibilities and all panes. I don't want to turn that on because that means that if I turn a class on, it turns on on every pane. We've done the split vertically, split horizontally. We haven't looked at this one. Create multiple view pane. Sorry, create floating view pane. So those of you that are from a, a Windows machine that haven't had the opportunity to have a, a floating view pane before, one that you can drag to another drawing. So in this situation, I can now have 
uh, multiple view pane, I can turn the view, I can rotate it, I might want to render that into a different style. So let's do that and we'll render it. Now I've got another screen I'm uh, connected here. So if I drag that across to the other screen, you guys won't be able to see it. So I'll have to leave part of it here. Um, but what if I start playing with my corner windows or I start deleting uh, maybe that window, I'll delete that window. And it disappears from my floating view pane. So now what I can do is I can work on my design layer. If I've got two screens, I can work on one screen, I can see the results on the other screen. If I move a window, it updates, which I think is really cool. Now, I didn't realize until the other day, these little tabs are new. And the reason I didn't realize they're new is that those of you on a Macintosh will say that they're not new, but they're new on a Windows machine. And they allow you to jump between drawings that are open, which is quite nice. I think, Neil, we've had these for a little while on the, on the Mac site. And the tab at the end is to create a new document, which is quite handy. So that's the concept of the multiple view panes. I don't see any questions about the multiple view panes at the moment. I did see someone on the community board say that they didn't think they were useful, and I think it's because you're used to a design or a workflow where you are used to going to a sheet layer, then you go right click, and then you go edit design layer, and you go back here. But I actually think that if you get out of that habit and set up multiple view panes, you'll find it a lot quicker. You'll be able to have your sheet layer on this side, and you'll be able to have your design layer on that side. I don't know why left and right for me. Uh, someone's obviously going to have a theory about it, but it's just the way that I used my previous program, and it worked really well. And so I figured, why not just go back to it? Um, I see someone said that multiple view panes are so very useful. Thanks, Vectorworks. Of course, I mean, we've been asking this for this for a long time. Now we've got it. I think it's a real improvement. So, um, But Ben, I'm not sure if you uh, realize or, or agree with me, but I think it's a, a, you have to think about perhaps changing your workflow a little bit, getting used to these multiple view panes, getting used to the idea that you've got uh, different ways of looking at it, and also making sure you get a bigger monitor maybe. Or, or at least a second one. So what's what's the other thing we're going to look at? Direct section editing. So I'm going to close my multiple view panes. I'm going to go back to my single pane, and I want to look at my sections. So here's a section, and we've now got the ability to edit sections in place. But first of all, before we do that, let's just have a look at a viewport here, let's go right click, I want to edit my design layer, and let's see the results. So here we are, I'm back to my design layer, part of it's in plan, part of it's not, I can unify my view, but if I render my view, it's rendered my view from the outside. Now I could, I guess, change to a 3D view, and I could, I better change this to OpenGL, because I'm going to try and select my stair and work on it. So there's my stair in here, Right click, force select, so it selects that object there. And then I could turn on my clip cube and I could move it around. But there's a lot of moving. There's a lot of selecting this and changing that and we need a quicker way. Right click, this is new, edit section in place. Here we are, we're now editing our section in place. And you'll notice it looks like my section. It's got the same graphic style as my section. It makes it easy to select my stair and then work on my stair. I can select this wall. Uh, I could double click on that wall. I can pull that wall all the way down to the bottom floor. So I've just extended that wall down through my stair. I could move this wall. I can move that footing. I can grab hold of a window and move it. This window's a corner window, I might not want to move that particular one. But I can edit all kinds of things now in the section, and it's still editing in the section. My first thought was, oh, that's really cool, but is it 2D or is it 3D? Oh, it's 3D. So you could, if you want to, change your view. Now, that view looks really weird, because 
my section has a, um, a step in it, a jog, I think someone called it. So my section actually comes along the ridge of my roof, steps back, goes through my stair, and Vectorx is presenting it in the same way that I cut my section, which I think is really cool. You might notice there's a bit of wall missing here. It's not a mistake. I just haven't drawn it. But I can go to a different, um, let's return back to our viewport, because I've got another section I wanted to look at, this one here, where I actually want to move some windows around. So let's go edit section in place. And I want to move that door. So I can just grab hold of it and I can just move it. I've moved it in section. It has moved it in plan. If I go back to my plan drawings, or maybe I could activate my multiple view panes and I could have a look at that because it's the downstairs. Let's go down there that door has moved. So if I move it back, I click to finish moving it. It's moved in plan. So it's moved in my demolition plan, it's moved here, it's moved there. It's really cool. So to return back to the viewport, so that's the editing sections in place. A huge improvement, very useful I think. Now, one of the things that's, um, I'm just going to go through my list to make sure I'm doing the things that I should do. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was the resource manager. It's had a little bit of love. It's that the, this is now here where you can uh, jump between different parts. It used to have a slash just here. We've also got up one level. So we go here, we can go up one level. If we're in another place like this, we can click on the home button, jump to the home button. And they've also sped up the searching and they've given you the ability to put and in as well, and as well as or. So you can search for things this and that and do searching that way. And, um, but yeah, they've sped it up um, and they've given, the icons have all been improved. So that's nice looking, just makes it easier to see what you're looking for. They've also, for lo those of you in a large office, They've also separated the workgroup libraries option from the user libraries option before they were together. And if you're working in an office, this is going to be a big improvement where you can say to users, don't use your user library, just use your workgroup library. So that's our manager. There's, they've made a small change to this tool here. This is our detail callout marker. It used to be that when you made a change to the shape of the detail callout marker, this line would lose its connection to your shape. So I'm just going to go back and make some changes to that. And that this might seem like something really small, but actually it used to bug me. And it used to mean a lot of effort to use this object. And I would stop using the object sometimes just because it was too much effort. But now when you change that shape, that line will automatically reconnect Previously, you'd have to change the location of this. You'd have to go to the detail call out graphic options. You'd have to say, go to the bottom right. Okay, and then you'd have to go back and then go back to the bottom left in order to fix that. But now you don't have to. It's going to stay there. And when I change the shape of that object, so let's go back to my reshape tool. Let's just grab this. We'll pull that out that way. We'll pull it up and it's staying connected. But the big one is, what happens when I pull that side in, does it stay connected? And that line stays connected. To me, that's a, a really nice little change. And if you're not using these to connect your details together, you really should. That's not new, but just make sure you connect them because that is now linked to a particular detail on a particular sheet layer. And if I change that detail, this reference will update automatically. Huge time saver. I'd like to look at some other things. Let's have a look. I've got, I forgot to open a file. I called it uh, more plugin styles. Let's open that. So plugin styles were introduced a little while ago and we have the opportunity to have things like doors and windows as plugin styles. And they've now improved that by adding other things like this. So this is my table and chairs, which I've now created as a plugin style and you'll notice the only options I can change are the length, the width, and the height. I can't change the type of chairs. I can't change the legs. This is all I can change. And this is because it's a object style. 
this is a, a cabinet, all I can change is the type, and I can change the length, because it's an object type. One drawer, four drawers, so I can change, I've chosen what things I want to be able to change. Everything else you'll notice is grayed out, and that's because it's an object style. This is an unstyled object, so what we could do is look at how do we create this into a style. Right click, and we can create plugin from unstyled plugin, or we can do it here on the object info palette. So we'll call it bookcase, and here we choose what things we want to be flexible and what things we want to be uh, controllable. So for example, the, king, the height, let's make that controllable. So this, uh, this little arrow means that the style, the symbol, is going to, um, the style is going to control the configuration and the type. And this slidey thing, or the slide bar, means that my object in the design layer will be flexible, I will be able to change that. So I want to change the height, the width, and the number of shelves. Okay on that, okay on that. Those are the only things now that I can change. So if I change the height, of course I need to change the number of shelves because it looks silly with that number of shelves. And that's all I want to be able to change. So that is now saved in my resource manager. If we have a look at my resource manager, I can use my home button. There's my, where's my bookcase? There's my bookcase. There's my table and chairs, so let's set my thumbnail view to right isometric for that. So I've got my cabinet, got my chairs, got my bookcase, and I can drag those to my library. So I've got a favorite here. I've got a library with furniture in it. Where's my, there's my library there, and there's furniture there, 57 furniture. So I can drag my bookcase to 57 furniture, that is now in my library, and any job I go to, I can grab that style out. So there are lots of new styles in Vectorworks, things like tables and chairs, cabinets, columns are now styles, so I can set up my uh, floor piles as styles, the ramps as styles, and we can create many more objects. Now I haven't gone through absolutely everything that's a new style, so look out. When you create an object, have a look, if we're if you use an object, have a look here and see if there's the word style here with a pop-up menu. If you see it, then you can create that object into a style. Now I've got a couple of questions about how a plugin object's different from styles. And that's a long, that, that could be a long discussion. So an optimal is totally fixed and there is no flexibility when you put a symbol in the drawing as to what can be changed. The difference between an object style is that you have an opportunity with an object style to control which parts are fixed and which parts are editable. So if you put, if you if you thought of a, um, uh, I think it's a gamut, between an object being an, an object being a total individual, totally flexible, and a symbol being totally fixed, Object styles fit between those two, and you get to choose where they fit on that. Now, I, if I've got time at the end of this, I'll have a look on my website, see if I've written something about this, I've written a tip about this. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see if we've got time to, to talk about it. But if you if you want to know, have a look at my website, learn.artroncad.com. I've written a blog about how to how to think about the difference between object styles and symbols. So the other thing I'd like to talk about is streamlined worksheets. Oh, sorry, learn.archoncad.com. Here's my website learn.archoncad.com, and I did a thing on object styles. It's probably a mistake for me to do that because now, uh, there we are, object styles, what are they? Just have a read of that, because uh, I, I need that page so I can see what I'm doing. So, worksheets, 
let's have a look at worksheets. So here I've got plants, and I need to create a worksheet that'll count up my plants. And of course, Vectorworks has some built-in ones. So reports, create report. This dialog box is new. If you want to use a pre-formatted worksheet, click here and choose pre-formatted. And there's a plant list down here. You can hit the letter P and jump down to it. Um, I'm probably using Vectorx Architect. It's probably not doing that one. But let's look for creating our own. So we want to create a plant record report. What do we want to look for? We want to look for objects with a record, and we want to look for objects that are a plant. And plant records what I want. Now, those of you that are used to using or creating your own worksheets will probably miss this one, the old advanced criteria, which we can still use. I'm going to use basic criteria. I don't want to look inside symbols or design layer viewports. And then I can start finding the things that I want. I want the um, the select from records that are the plant record. But you can also choose other information. So you can search for functions. You can uh, choose a different so you can actually look for objects with one record, but report objects with a different record. Much easier. Now, I want the ID. So I want the ID. I want the Latin name, I think, first. I want the common name as well. And let's say I want the category, but I'm going to forget. So I'm not going to put the category in yet. We're going to do that later. Uh, and we can append to an existing worksheet. This used to be hidden away. Man, the number of times I lost that was, but never mind. It's now there. It's not going to be easy for me to forget it. And there's my worksheet. Now, there was an opportunity to put the worksheet on a drawing. And if you do, you just click on the drawing and that places it for you. So what's different? The database header row looks different. There used to be a series of icons that you could drag onto the columns to, for sorting. Now, you click on this little pull down menu and you say, I want to summarize items. So that just groups all the items together that are the same. Click on that again. I want to sort them ascending. Now they're all sorted. It's so much easier now to make your choices. And if you want to sort from there on, it's a lot easier to do that again. So let's have a look. Uh, now I forgot to put the category in. That's a shame. I'd like to put category. So what I can do now is I can click here and I can say, Select records from plant, so hit the letter P again to jump down to plant record, and I want category. Cool, okay. And it's that easy to add extra information. I was talking to someone the other day when I was showing this, and they said that what they used to do was to print out, they'd create a report with all of the records, and they'd print it out, and they'd have a big wide piece of paper, and they'd have to look for this code. You don't have to. Now you can just click here, and you can choose the information you want, which is really pretty cool. They've changed the plant tag, made it easier to, to create custom tags, which is nice. Uh, but how are we getting on for time? Because I'm, I'm afraid we're going to run out of time at some point. Uh, detail quality improvements, we've done that. This, they've improved. Oh, while we're talking about that, let's just have a look at our landscape and we'll have a look at our tags. Make sure I choose a plant, and let's edit the plant. Plant settings. So here's my tag information. So I can have the top is the quantity common name. What they've changed is this custom tag, and they've made it a lot easier now to choose your custom ID. So let's start at the top. We'll have ID first. Then we'll have the quantity. Then we'll have the Latin name, and I better put some spaces and some dashes in here to separate them. I thought it was quite cool. You can actually stick an image in here. Someone taught me the other day how you can put your image in, uh, an image detail. But the plant has to be connected to the database. I'm not at the moment, so I'm just going to take that away. But it is quite easy to do. If, it, if your plant is connected to your plant database, you can choose the detail image, and any image you put in there will turn up at the end of your tag. 
And so you can see it's put in the, the MEEX, the number, and my Latin name. And it's so easy now to change those tags. While we're talking about the landscape, maybe we should have a look at the improvements to site modeling. So site modeling, um, it's a site model. One of the major changes, right click, edit the proposed site model contours. I can just push them around. Now, if I do that, what's gonna happen? I've got my contours every, I think, 10 inches, 250 millimeters apart. So I've got a lot of contours here. And one of the things I did think of that might make this easier is to go back to my site model settings and change my contour interval to a meter with a multiple every one. So you might notice the dialog box has changed. So the maximum elevation, minimum elevation, that hasn't changed. Uh, this extend when needed, I think that has been there before and I, I often forget to tick it. The 2D display, that really hasn't changed. It's still got the proposed only, existing colored. So those are still the same. What they've done is they've redesigned this dialog box. So it's much more like some of the other larger dialog boxes with the list down the side here on the left and then the views on the right. So let's have a look at our 3D display. We have the ability to change the mesh smoothing just for the site model, which is quite cool. You can show the skirt or not. That's the skirt down the side here. And we can show 3D contours. One of the changes which is subtle, but I thought was really useful, was the saving of the settings. So if I go back to my settings here, my general settings, let's change that to 250 contours. Let's change that to one meter contours. And I thought that was kind of cool that you can actually save those to make it easy to jump between one type of setting and the other. So right click, let's edit my proposed contours and let's just start pushing these around. So double click on that, activates the reshape tool. Don't forget with the reshape tool that you can drag a marquee and just delete a few of the things that are inside it. And then you can just start pulling these around. So I'm gonna grab hold of that one. That's a point there. That's a vertex point. This is a midpoint, don't forget. So let's pull that one down there and pull that one there and this one over here. And then I'm gonna grab this one and bring this one so it comes in really close to make a little sort of a bank in that area. And then this one I can push the other way. So I've ended up with a sort of a flat spot. And there's my new contours. Then I go back to my site model settings and say, well, I still need to have my contours closer together. I still need to see more of them. Go back to your settings and change them and they all change back again. But if I change, if I do my edit proposed site contours there, you can see there's a lot to move around and maybe you don't want to move that many. But that's kind of a cool trick, I reckon, that ability just to um, create the quick change. Maybe we'll give it a color that is a bit more greeny. This might have a texture on it, so I've got to be careful on that. And this was taken from one that had a texture bed on it, so I've got to be careful. But you can see there's a change in the in the shape. You can see I've actually got my shape going in there. Oh, don't like that. So while we're looking at our site model, there's a new tool in the visualization area. And I just need to change my workspace so I can see it. I'm using an old workspace, which has got a couple of things missing. So I'll just change to the architect workspace because there's a new tool in here in the visualization called foliage, which is not there. Tools, workspaces. Hopefully it's in my landmark. You can not believe it, but I tried all this yesterday and it was all fine. Okay, so there we are, there's my foliage tool. And the foliage tool can create a great bit of foliage. You can use it to create a hedge. Uh, let's have a look, what have we got here? We've got a profile, I want that to be linear. 
and I can choose how many symbols are in there. You can see it's actually counting up exactly how many symbols I've got. So let's just undo that. So we've got a height of two meters and a depth of 300. And I'm going to turn off that automatic count. We're just going to have a few symbols. I'm going to make it a thousand. But you'll notice that every time you make the change, that it actually calculates where the foliage is. And the reason for that is that each leaf on this foliage is a separate symbol. So there is my foliage. Let me just click on that. And then I'll turn my view to rotate it. And you can see my foliage is following exactly my site because there's a tick box here sends to surface of site model, which is really cool. They've actually got their foliage following the site model. I'm just going to put a quick heliodon in so that we've got something for light. And have we got any shadows? So there are my shadows, so you can see my foliage. And so the more points you put in, or the more parts of the foliage you put in, the nicer it'll be, but also the slower it will be. So if you put in 2,000 leaves, then it takes a bit longer. Now, the, the you don't have to use this just for creating hedges, although I thought it would be really easy to create something like a maze or a spiral or something like that that would um, make it real easy. Uh, something really cool like that, but you can also use it on a 3D object. So you can actually create a 3D object and stick it on like a pergola. So you can have your leaves falling over a pergola. You can also choose a second symbol for flowers. So I've chosen the camellia. Now it's going to recalculate to start with, but I haven't told it how many flowers I want, what percentage of flowers I need. So let's cancel that and we will have 20% of those will be camellias. So we should see some red flowers appearing in amongst the green leaves. The more symbols you put in, the more beautiful it's going to look, but it, can, it could get quite slow. So at design, you might want to limit it to just a few, but as you get closer to a presentation, you might be willing to wait for that, and so you might be willing to put a whole lot more symbols in. And I think it's kind of cool the way it follows along the site model and goes up my slope and follows along. And if I double the number of symbols, it's going to uh, really improve the look of that. But obviously, slow it down. So we've done that. I want to save that. And we've done the plugin style, so I don't want to save that either. We've looked at this. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'd like to talk about title blocks. So what's changed with the title block is not just the name of the tool. It's called the title block border tool. And it's not just, although the icon looks just like the sheet border, it's a little bit more than that. So I'm going to start with a blank file or something that hasn't got any, yeah, let's start with a blank file. We'll turn, off our, turn these off, and I'd like to show you how I think you can deal with your sheet borders. So I'll set my page up first. So this is an A3 page. It's landscape, and it's one and one. Cool. So let's get my sheet border tool. I come in here, and I go, which sort of sheet border do I want to use? Do I want to use a custom title block? An architectural one, what do I want to use? Let's use one I've not used before. Let's choose that one. You select that, double click, and there's my border. And the first reaction that you probably have is to like, well, I want to right click and I want to change that. You know, I want to change the, the border settings. I think it's important to remember that this object, the title block border, is a object style. And what that means is that there's somewhere on the resource manager where we've got a copy of that object. Let's just have a look here. So there it is there. It's in my resource manager, and it is a object style. And the object style is controlling the border, the size, everything about it. You can edit it through here by using edit style on the object info palette. And we want to edit this. So the first thing I want to do is to edit my border. 
I'm using millimeters, so I just make my border. Usually I make it one millimeter. So one, one. And then I hide the border because I often don't like it. So I like a very tight border on the edge. I like my thing to be really close to the edge of my, my um, title block. So the next thing, my sheet zones. Do I want the outline? Yes or no? I mean, it's a personal choice. But you'll notice that just making those simple changes, it's made a dramatic improvement or a dramatic change to my title block. It's still a title block border. It's still a It's still an object style but I've made quite a lot of changes to it. So let's edit that again. One of the things that used to be a problem was finding out or figuring out how you can change the title block layout. And that has changed dramatically. So now what we have is we have the ability to edit the title block layout. Now this is a special editing area for editing my title block. I don't want to have that line. I don't want that, don't want that. I don't want any of that stuff. I want to move all of these things across. In fact, I want to make room for all of this. So what I'm going to do is get rid of all the stuff that's in here. I don't need, I don't usually use any of that. I want to get rid of these bits. So I'll just use things like my trim tool. Let's get rid of that. Now uh, we can move, we can shuffle some of these up. So that's my design firm name and my consultant name. I'll just get rid of those completely. So that's going to go to there. All of this information here is going to be pushed over. Get rid of that completely. And these other bits are going to come in and fill in that gap that I've got there. So let's grab those bits and I'll pull those across so they fill in that area there. It's not bad, it just about fits. So let's exit that. Huge change. So number one, I think it's easier to edit your title blocks. Let's look at my title block settings. So here, I'm actually editing this individual title block. So you might notice that um, some things here I can change. Well, not many of those, because they're all controlled by my object style. What about my project data? Can I change that? Well, I could change those maybe. So project line one, I can change that. The challenge might be that you want to change the project name. So this is a new house. Okay. And then you find out where it didn't show up. Why didn't it show up in my project title? Let's go back and edit it and we'll find out. So let's edit our style. And let's go back to title block and edit the title block layout. So here we edited Oh, sorry, just over here. That one. We were trying to edit that one. We were thinking that the object title would go into there. But it's not. Because what they've changed, I don't know if anyone's ever edited one of these before, that you'd have to link text to record to get a connection between this bit of text and your title block on the, on the um, dialog box. Now, there's a pop-up menu or a pop-up list where you can actually choose which things you want to attach that to. So let's make this wider so you can all read it properly. So that bit of text, we wanted that to connect to project data, project name. Not file name, not number of sheets, project name. And then that now has new house. There's another bit of text here, and we wanted that to connect to, I think, the client name. Let's edit our title block layout. Now when we add information to our project client name, so Joe Blogs, that should now fill in I'll just put in an address that I do know. So there it is there, new house. Now the way that because of the client, because of the way the client was um, set up, it's going up. So you need to be careful of the formatting of that. But otherwise it works really well. So I'm just gonna go back and, and take out Joe Blog's address. So there it is. So are there any questions about that so far? There's not too many questions. Okay. 
So we've done all that, but that's really just a slight improvement on the sheet border. Title block manager. This is the title block manager that allows us to send out drawings. So let's have a look at our sheet data. We can play with that, the revision data. Now I've only got one sheet border here, so I'm, my buttons for previous and next are not working, but we can add revisions. And we can add them to each sheet, or we can add them individually as we go through. We can create issue data, and we can add that to, to the each sheet. So what we need is something that's got some already. Here we are, so let's go title block manager, revision. So we're going to add a new revision and it's approved by me. And the description is uh, revised bathroom. If you're gonna put it on each sheet, make sure you spell it right. Uh, not the sheet only, all sheets. So I want this revision to go on every sheet. Now we want to do an issue data. So let's go to my issues here. Uh, and we're going to add an issue. And for approval, this is JP, I did that again. So this is going to, description is, revised issue. I could put in the recipients, all sheets, okay. And issue manager. So here, we're going to create an update, update our revision history. We're going to create and update a project issue history. And we're gonna put that on sheet one. We're gonna do those, do all of that. And we're gonna put that on sheet two. And we're going to update our sheet revision log. Okay. And okay. Now there's probably some questions about this. Let's have a look. Yeah, um, can existing title sheet borders be brought forward into 2018? Uh, they've designed it so that you can bring your old title blocks through. And the foliage tool, it's not just straight edged hedges. Uh, you can attach the foliage to any 3D form. So you can actually make a 3D model of an elephant and put foliage on it if you want. Um, but I thought that this was really pretty cool. I've done my issue. Here it is here, today's date. JP issued it. Here's all my revisions. It didn't actually fill in who they're going to, but you can certainly fill that in here. It's a worksheet after all, so you can click on that. You can put in the name that it's going to. You know, it's going to Fred. He works at the council. You're giving him one copy. It's going to my friend Dave. You know, he's the contractor. He gets two copies and that's, and so on. So this becomes what's known as a document transmittal form. So you've now got a document transmittal form. Then don't, does anyone notice it actually filled in the job, the drawing number? and it filled in the sheet title for me, and it filled in the size of my drawings, and it's got all my revisions. And you can see I've had a play with this. I've done it a couple of times. And so I've got all my revision Bs, and I've got some revision C, except one's revision D. And I think that is a pretty cool technique. So look out for, um, look out for this. It has taken me a little while to um, understand exactly how to do it all and, and so it makes it look real easy. Um, those of you that are subscribers, people that, that I've presented this to have said you need to write a manual on it. So I'm thinking about doing that. And probably the foliage tool, I think I've written a manual on that previously, um, but someone suggested I write a manual on the foliage tool as well. So let me just have a look. Uh, wall modeling, plant tags we've done, foliage tool. Okay, so the last thing I was gonna look at is the architectural wall modeling. And then we'll be ready for questions and answers. So there's my floor, there's my walls, and I've got a, a problem with one of my walls where 
This wall is a styled wall. This wall is a styled wall, and I need this wall to project lower down than these other styles, but they're both the same styles. If I go back to components and have a look at my cladding, I can change that offset on that wall alone without affecting my other walls. So you select a styled wall, click on components, let's look at the cladding. I need that to project down another 10 inches only changes that one wall, which I thought was pretty cool. They, uh, no more creating another style just for that part. And Barbara, I think that's covered everything I wanted to cover. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Jonathan. And um, I hope everybody, you know, starts using these new features right away. Uh, thanks to your help. And, um, so yeah, there's no questions, but you know, this is your chance. This is your last chance, everybody. Well, let me bring that while we're waiting for the questions to arrive. Yes. Um, let me bring this object styles across. Sure. So, who asked the question? Someone asked the question. Beth, I think. Yeah, Beth asked the question. So, Beth, I don't know if you're still here. Yeah, yeah, she's here. Uh, so, Beth, a plugin, a plugin object is totally flexible. It's a complete individual, and what you can do here is a symbol is a um, not flexible. They're all the same, and so you can think of this as being a um, I forget what you call it, Barbara. You know, a, a range from one to the other, and you can choose where along that range you put your style. So you can put your style here, not very flexible, or you can put your style down this end where it's really flexible, but they're, they're not mostly the same. So you can give them flexibility. So some things are fixed, but not many. Um, so that was a freebie that people can read on. It's one of my tips. Someone asked if there was a charge for my manuals. Yeah, I have a, a subscription service, Beth, where every month you get together and I write a new manual. Uh, here they are, here's my manuals. Um, and we have a workshop where we go through the manual, and then we have other workshops the following week where we look at what's best in VectorWorks Architect or what questions people have got. And so this is the manual I wrote for um, what's new in VectorWorks. And there are movies in there. The last month we did cloud services, so there are movies for that. We did wall slabs and roofs, so there's a bunch of movies for that. Um, so I've got a, a, a series of subscribers, and they love coming every month. Yeah, check it out, people, uh, if you haven't already. I know some of the people that are, have joined us today are huge fans, and they already know. But if the, for the ones of you who haven't been on Arconcad.com, just you know, um, check it out. And uh, so you uh, cover all the questions, Jonathan, and I'm going to. Um, take the screen back I'm afraid um, give me a second I want to thank everybody for joining us today it was certainly wonderful to have you on board and uh, I want to remind everyone to visit our web page at noveg.com here it is where you can find the entire Vectorworks product line so yeah visit take, you know take some time and visit our extensive catalog and um, uh, also you can uh, join our network on Facebook or plus and Twitter and next week our webinar will be about uh, twin motion 2018 and if you don't have never seen this software in, in action um, join us next week it's gonna be really exciting and to watch today's webinar or previous ones check out our Novage YouTube and Vimeo channels our webinar playlist as webinars for every software taste thanks again Jonathan um, it was uh, wonderful to have you today with us. And um, uh, till the next webinar, have a great rest of the day and uh, goodbye, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Bye.